Let's see here. As in range, no team, Twitch, RID. Mechanics okay, team play really bad, you get it. Team play is bad. You just want to improve. Sounds good. I always love people who want to improve. That's the first step. I'm hard stuck in bronze five. Improve. You really like doing replays, obviously, which is my favorite way to learn as well. Team fighting, macro, and positioning. All right. Well, if you really are bronze five, then it actually should not be too hard to get you to silver rather quickly because from my experience people who are unranked or in bronze 5 have the same uh, set of problems that usually plague their gameplay and uh, they're all really really easy to fix as long as you do some few simple things in positioning Shun -ing. all right I just like having notes of things I've gone over with people I coach I have a backlog of this stuff. Alrighty, and let's see, this will be your free lesson. And then, so this should count. Alright, cool. So, let's see here. Let me get the stream back open. It is though you are here. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to breeze through your replay following you at like mock speed. So I can get a, get, get a bearing on uh, how this game goes. Go mid, blah 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 Nito 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 Here, you poking, soaking I'm just checking to see where you're going on the map right now. I want to see if your macro is okay or if it is poor. That was slow. It's slow and you lose a lot of stuff so far, which is exactly what I thought it would be. There's nothing really, really crazy yet. You're exact. All your problems are the same problems everybody else says that you're ELO, so no, you shouldn't feel really bad about that. Means that it'll be a simple fix. Right. I want to see a little bit of you post 10 here. And I think you got a basic idea from this point, but let's see. Usually people share replays of how they lose. Did you lose this one? It's pretty even at the moment. 
Yeah, that was pretty good, actually. That was nice. Let's see. Do you know if you uh, lost this one? We were losing most of the match, came back and won. All right, that's fair. I was going to say, after that five-man team fight, I was like, wait, did you lose? Like, it would have had to be quite the throw. So you came back and won. That's good. All right, cool. This is completely within prediction. So we can go back and we can look at it from the start. And we wanted to focus on team fighting, macro, and positioning. All right. Slow this back down. So, bronze players almost always struggle with doing the fundamental macro. Fundamental macro in this game is you're soaking a lane. You're making sure that your team soaks every lane. And you do that until the map mechanic comes up. Now, what do I mean by map mechanic? That's the thing that's different on every map, right? On this map, you have the altars. On other maps like Black Hearts Bay, you have coins, uh, Garden of Terror, it's the seeds, um, you know, every map has its its unique map mechanic, its unique map thing that you fight over. All you have to do is make sure that you soak every lane, whatever that is, in between the map mechanics. So when the map mechanics up, you go, you fight for it. When it's down, make sure your team gets every minion under the sun. As long as you can get that much done, you're good. Now, a lot of one of the things people don't realize why everyone fights in mid. I turn the sound off because it can get loud sometimes. We fight in mid exclusively to, to stack quests. So, if your team has a lot of quests to stack, you want to fight in mid. Obviously, Kel'Thuzad has a quest baseline, but that's why you fight. So, when you go fight mid at the start of the game, you're looking to stack your quest as much as possible in the shortest amount of time. So, you want to play really aggressively when you uh, get in here. Because you can always just back up and so. So let's see how you do. So you get that first chain. That totally works. But uh, you didn't do the second chain pull into the stun. So KT is all about combos. You wanna hit the chain, put your little ice circle down, and then throw out, and you wanna put it down in between two people, throw out the second chain so that they combine in the middle, land on the stun, and then hit them with a Q. And when, when you have your ult, you put your ult in there too. So make sure you always use that second chain in between the ice. Other than that, you you did everything that you could do. Let's see if you step up again. Ooh, ooh, that was a chains. That was a chains. If you're close enough to chains, get those chains out there. You wanna, like, as long as they aren't on cooldown, I'll, I'll select you here. I don't know if I can do that. Yeah. So here, as long as your stuff is not on cooldown, you need to be getting stacks. So that's one of the things that you should focus on. Make sure when you're stacking your quest early game. If it's off cooldown, just step up. Just step up and make it happen. You can play a little greedy, like, especially whenever, as long as your team picks a support, they, they're there to heal you, so lose some life to stack your quest. See here, you go around. Again, you have your uh, Frost Nova, you have your chains here, but you're way off in the back. Way off in the back. If you're over where Artanis is instead of over here, right? Then you could have chained Butcher, you could have put down your W, chained a Gul'dan, that's another three stacks right there. So, you've already given up the potential of an additional six stacks on your quest, just in these few couple seconds. Again, you're just hovering here, you have your Frost Nova, you can put it down right there. Chains, alright. And then here, you're, you get the chain. But because you sacrificed your positioning and you, you weren't able to do this earlier, now you can't actually get your W all the way back here. You can't reach that, right? So you would have wanted to chain on Butcher here. Basically, you, a lot of what's coming down in these first few moments is you could have already been at half stacks. You could have already had your Ice Sickle, right? That comes at 15. You could have already been 15, maybe 18 stacks, but just because you won't step up when you're off cooldown, you're missing out on just a tremendous amount of opportunity. And then when you do step up, it's after your window of opportunity has already shrunk. So you're not able to get the ice on the double. You're not able to get the full three, right? You only get the two from the chain, so you actually still miss out on one. So your mid fight, again, just when you have those cooldowns, step up, make it happen. If you take some damage, yeah, back up and tell White Mane to heal you, you know, or whoever your healer is. So here we step up. 
Beautiful. That's absolutely perfect. That is how it's done every time. That is phenomenal. But more of that. Right now you made it to 11 stacks, and I think we agreed that you missed already 10. So you're already at 21 stacks at 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Right, so you are already almost there in 2 minutes into the game. Oh, oh, 7 in. There's that. So we keep track. So basically, again, again, I know I'm harping on this, but you wanted that mechanics. If you had done everything correctly, you'd be stacked right here. 2 minutes and 43 seconds, right? Basically, 2 minutes and 43 seconds, I think, if you hadn't missed and you had stepped up on every single cooldown, you got it. You have it. You are completely stacked in 2 minutes and 43 seconds. All right, now we know that the altars are spawning in 12 seconds. Now, usually, this doesn't always happen, but usually each team will send one person up here to kind of cap. It's all well and good, and then everybody comes down and fights here. All you have to do to know where you should go is look at where they go and count the numbers. Heroes macro is one of the easiest things in the world. It literally comes down to how many of them are there and how many of us are there, right? So for example, right now there's three of you mid and two of them mid. If you fought, you have more people, you'd probably win. You want to take that kind of logic and apply it to every situation. So let's see where you go. So you have Artanis up here. So Artanis should come cap this for you. And then you should fight over bottom. But, see how they only send one person? They have more people down here. You're kind of overdoing it. You're, uh, by, by coming up here and, and protecting her, right? Artanis and her were already up here. And for them, they have Butcher and they have Varian. That's two on two. They don't need more than two on two. So you made it a three on two, so to speak, right? Three of you, two of them. Three on two up top. So unless you get kills, this was a waste of a movement. Again, it just comes down to how many of us are there, how many of them are there. So if you're going to make an, a play where there's more of you, you better be getting kills. And if you don't think you're going to be getting kills, right? If you think coming up here is not going to net you kills because you're on a full variant, then you, you're in the wrong spot and you should have been down here. Am I coming through? You hearing everything okay? Any questions so far? through the first three minutes here. I don't know how much of a, a lag time you have, so. Or if you're answering. You, I hear you clearly. You got questions? You, uh, you Okay, nothing so far. I see. All right. Sounds good. Well, we'll continue on from this point. So you didn't get anything. And this is still up due to some miracle. I don't, I don't know why this is still up, but... Again, all you need to do at Bronze, and this is what I said when, when I said you that people have the same mistakes. If the map mechanic is up, you fight over it, and you fight over it until it is down. As long as you don't die, don't kill yourself. Never die. Never die is the prevailing rule ever over everything. But it's still up, right? This hasn't gotten capped, but you went to the other side of the map. Right? You have an Abathur, too. Like, you have Abathur down here. Abathur can, can soak where you are with his hat. So you are in as wrong a spot as possible until the map mechanic is down, until the seeds are off the map, until the coins are off the map, until the, the spider have died, until the Punisher is dead, until whatever it is you play around the map mechanic. That's all you have to do. Very simple. So since this is still up, you should have been down here. Because you're not down here is the reason your team's dying. They're essentially five on four, and they're five on four because you and also White Mane, who, who was also making a mistake here, are out of position. <laughs> Nothing bad about this. You had to tap, life goes on. All right, where do you go? So again, in between, all you want to do is soak and soak every lane. If you do this, you're getting out of bronze and you're going to silver. So you, you, your team is soaking mid. Abathur is, is, is technically down here. He's not really soaking. He's not doing the right thing. But this whole lane is open. Be the person on your team who's willing to move. Right? The map mechanic's not up. There's nothing worth fighting over. Come on up here. You don't have to fight the butcher out here, right? You can just sit by your towers and soak. But, but you're going to miss... So much if no one gets up here. All right, somebody got up here. But still, it's slow. You could have moved up there. You could have been faster. Be faster than your team. Be better. 
Be the player you always wish your teammates were. That's, ba that's basically what it comes down to. Alright, so now your team is just slow. Alright, you don't step in. That's smart. That's good play. And let's slow it down. Let's see what happens. So here comes Butcher. And you have... Do you have all your stuff? You have all your stuff. Get a knife. Uh, not bad. Technically, you missed the triple, but not bad. Nothing wrong there. You tried to do the right play, and trying to do the right play is what happens. Sometimes people miss. That's just, that's just life. You're not going to hit every combo under the sun, but at least you tried to hit the proper combo. So that's something I can really get behind. Good play there. Let's speed it up. Let's get to the next thing. So you're soaking every lane? Yes, you are. You're going to come down and make it happen. Oh, God, you found me. And you're in, and you're out. Nothing bad happened. Cool. That was the correct move, right? You wanted to get down and soak. They found you. You didn't die. Perfect. But now you're down here, and that's great. You get a combo. Oh, my God. Are you sure you're not Grandmasters? Because, I mean, you're not looking too bronze. Are you sure? You, to you told me bronze five, but that was like... We got to go back and look at that again. Well, like what what is it? Oh, you know, just just casual bronze five things. Just casual, you know, casually soloing a ghoul Dan one v three. Just just what you do. Just how it's done. <laughs> man, if I could casually solo ghoul Dan one v three, man, and I I should aspire to be bronze five. That's impressive. And you're soaking, and what's coming up in ten seconds? Is it coming up in 10 seconds? So, you're gonna run straight there, right? Oh, no! You're gonna, you're gonna run straight there, right? You're gonna... You're gonna run straight there, right? Ah, no! Ah! Ah! No! This is like the Luke I am your father moment right there from Star Wars. All you have to do all you have to do, macro, all you have to do is when these things are up, you go and fight over them. That's it. That right there is like silver, possibly even gold. That's all you got to do. Get to these things when you're up. Now, if you want to soak when they're not, that's fine. But when they're up, y'all need to be up here. Your team's in a fight without a person because you ain't there. That's all it is on every map. On every map. Yeah, well, 10 doesn't matter at bronze. 10 actually hardly matters for the people I coach in plat. Like, no lie. There there have been a plethora of times where the players are just so bad that they'll have 10 and fail everything. And, and you'll just win anyway. Like, it's still more worth it at bronze to just do fundamentals. Just do the fundamentals. If, if you do them all the time, I guarantee it'll work out for you more than doing anything else what behind ahead it really doesn't matter because a lot of these players are making mistakes like mad like the fact that cool dan stepped into you and let you get that kill is ridiculous the fact that half these characters step into you and let you get killed is ridiculous the fact that half of your your team has been stepping in and dying is ridiculous like there's a lot of bad play going on here but there's no point in focusing on the bad play from the other members of your team or of their team because in the end the only person you can control is yourself you're the only person who clicks your mouse. You're the only person who can click your spells. You can't control them, right? You can't move them around. You can't press their spells for them. So the best way that you can learn is to learn what the best move is despite them making mistakes. Even at the highest level of play, sometimes people miss a spell. Sometimes people step in the wrong spot. But if you teach yourself to play, to do the best possible thing, no matter the situation, then it doesn't matter how badly your team is messing up. Like you, you can go into 10s at your ELO and at most ELOs and feel absolutely confident that you can still win that fight. Guaranteed. With just some good play. Fair enough. Now I promise you, if you just do the fundamentals, it'll work. Let's see what hoes on from here. 
Good soaking, good soaking. And you come down, you get soaking. There's nothing wrong with this. We like this. And you get going. You get a little, little s stuff. And you get more stuff. Oh, that was so close. Oh, that was so close. You almost got two. That would have been great. But hey, you got one. That was good enough. Nice. And you're right here in time. We like it. Oh. Ooh. All right. You should be. You should be diamond. All right, there. That's diamond level play. Bush cheesing into into a double. That's diamond play. That's how I play KT. That was gorgeous. See, look at this. Look at this. Okay. Remember when I said count the numbers? Let's go to the everybody vision. I want you to count the numbers with me. How many red players are at this fight, and how many blue players are at this fight? Why don't you Why don't you type that one to me? <laughs> Tell me the numbers. <laughs> I know you can count, or at least I hope you can. How many red players? How many blue players? Because this is one of the most important things to climbing. Four versus two. Okay? It's four versus two. And Diablo charged into your team. This is what I mean when I said there's bad play on both sides all the time. But you have to be able to recognize when the other team makes bad play and capitalizes. You are watching two members of the enemy team in a four versus two charge headlong into your face. Who's going to win? Who's going to win here? Who do you think? G give me a wild guess. You think Butcher Diablo's going to win? Or do you think you're going to win? Yeah, you. Exactly. These are the kinds of situations you want to see. By getting that double kill, you guaranteed win. Right? You're at, at worst. At worst, you're five versus three. At worst. Right? And despite that, despite the fact that you have that many people and they have that many people. They 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 ran at you to die. Right? KT is one of the best characters to climb on in all of solo queue. So if you can get them under your thumbs, you can make Grandmasters. Burst damage characters carry exceptionally hard in Heroes of the Storm. For a plethora of reasons that we don't have to get into today. But you want to recognize these kinds of situations. You get that double. Bam. And then they charge in at you. Oh, sweet. Another free double. And then what does Varian do? His entire team's dead. And he charges in, bruh. He charges in. He's like trying to fight it out, sort of. What the hell is that? What? What? He is literally in the worst possible position he can be. Five versus one. He's like, here I come. Rock you like a heart. Here I am, man. 1v3 he charges in. 2v3 they run at you. This is why you're making the comeback. Is like Keltuzad takes people apart. You can instantly kill people when they step out of position. Instantly. That's what makes burst damage so good in this game. They step up, they lose. That's it. You're dead. Goodbye now. Have fun. And they keep stepping into you with disadvantage numbers. All it takes is you look at the minimap, you count. More of us, less of them. Fight them. Easy, you don't climb. Oh, damn, that was really close. But again, sometimes people miss. Nothing wrong with the fact that you missed. Don't ever be upset with the fact that you missed as long as you tried to make the correct play. Of course, you want to improve your accuracy, but the fact that you tried matters more than the fact that you missed. Awesome. And you're going to clean up some kills. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful play. And you're going to get right to these things. And, oh, again, four of you, two of them. Well, four, I'm, I always count hat as part of the big group because it's hat. All right, three versus two if we don't count hat. And they walked straight at you. This is bronze. All right, this is bronze. They will do this in all your games. They will simply walk at you to die. And all you have to do is say, thank you very much and kill them. That's it. This is a great push. Nothing wrong here. Blah, 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 blah. Another great combo. That was great. And you're like, alright, let's go get rid of this. <laughs> I have nothing wrong with your mid-game soaking. This is great. Everywhere you're going makes perfect sense. You're sticking with your team, which is important. This is good. This is a fantastic play. And you're going to wait for another bush cheese. Now, 
Not against this team, but against future teams, I'd rather you Bush Cheese aggressively. I don't recommend doing it into this team because they are triple front line and they're pretty beefy. Right? So if you Bush Cheese aggressively, you're not guaranteed kills. And then they'll just turn around and blow you up. Right? You're on a very defensive side. But let's say they're running triple back line like Gul'dan, KT, Falstead. Or something. I don't know. Three back line carries and a support. That means that four out of the five people who you could see die instantly to Kel'Thuzad. And if that's the case, I'd rather you Bush Cheese over here. You wait until you see a couple carries, boom, 3v5. Instant, 3v5. You got the right idea, just a little wiggly on the execution. Even, I'd rather even see you over here, where you're closer to your team, they can follow up and protect you. But right now you're just a wee bit too defensive, even though you have the right idea. All right, you go up. Oh, you missed chains, it happens. All right, let's see here. We're gonna slow this down, we're gonna take this slow by slow. You're in a great position. Nothing wrong with where you're at. Get out of chains. All right. Get out of combo. All right. Kaboom. All right. Now you're out of stuff, so you just need to run. You turn a little bit. Get some auto damage. Fantastic. You got chains in a second. Here we go. Chains. 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 Oh yeah. That was that was literally flawless. Your team fighting is excellent. There's been absolutely no problem with the team fighting. Your position constantly in the back. You always go for the combo. You don't overstep when you don't have the combo. Miss or hit. It's great stuff. Here you step back in. Get another combo. Absolutely flawless. You're making that comeback because all, all you're doing from this point on is you're counting the numbers. You go, there's more of us than there are of you. Hit your combo. That, that has been how I would define all of the last maybe like seven situations oh look we have more people combo oh look we have more people combo oh look we have more people combo that's it over and over that was really nice oh look we have more people combo again you miss who cares you know mistakes happen life goes on of course you're gonna win from that point out what are they gonna do to you and here you get to make a little cheeky play Boom. Blue team has destroyed a fort. Here you're being cheeky. If you pull this off, it's because they're bronze. Yep, they're bronze. All right, fantastic. Like they should never, they should never let you just do that to them, but they do because they're bad. There you go. Again, like, wh why is he still standing there? I don't know, but who cares? It's over at that point. Any questions? You want me to go over specific parts again? You want to go over the main concepts again? You have any anything that didn't make sense? Yeah, early game was your biggest problem. If you played early game how you played your late game, you'd be fine. The difference between a lot of the late game situations and that early game, we'll go back to the early game. Yeah. The late game, you were up people, right? In the early game, you're not up people. You you have the same amount of people mid as they do. Let's get there. But this is a little something that you can work on to improve your mechanics that much more if you'd like to. And then uh, I should make a couple quick notes here of all the things we've gone over. So count numbers... Uh, then recognize. All right, step early. Early, yeah. Just do fundamental rotations. Fundamental. And then this last one is, is something I call windows. Windows. All right. So we'll go over windows since we still have plenty of time because there wasn't a lot to go over in the back other than just us tell you you did real good. Oh, Dr. Pepper is delicious. All right. So Windows is a very, very simple concept, but it takes a while to practice and get used to, and it's one of the most crucial concepts in MOBA games, just in general. And it's exceptionally crucial in Heroes of the Storm, and it's even more important for burst characters than it is for any other character in the game. 
And based on the fact that you call yourself Keltazan main, uh, I'm going to say that you like yourself some KT, and he is definitely a burst character. I know that may shock you, as uh, you have never seen him burst anyone down before. Now, Windows is the simple notion of keeping track of your opponent's cooldowns and looking for a window of opportunity on which you can pounce. And I think that a lot of your early game mistakes are stemming from not recognizing windows. Now, as a carry, you always want, you basically want to never get hit by anything and always land all your stuff. And that sounds a lot easier said than none, that's because it is. But the easiest time to land all your stuff is when the other team has no dangerous spells. What do I mean? They don't have crowd control. Diablo charge flip. Variant taunt. Butcher charge. These are all big crowd control things that can lock you down in place as a squishy character and eat you alive. Right? They don't have burst damage. Don't walk into a pyro blast. That's probably a bad idea. Right? You are afraid of, as a backliner, burst damage and crowd control. Those are the two things that scare you. And a lot of the time when you didn't step up to get your combos, they didn't have these things. They had already used them. So let's see here. All right, Diablo's flip is down. Diablo's charge is down. And right here, because they've used their CC, Butcher's not gonna charge you while he's under the towers, right? He's not gonna kill you. He would just die to the towers if he tried to turn on you. So that would be really stupid. So you don't have to worry about Butcher because he's in such a bad positioning. Because they've used all their stuff, there is physically nothing here that can hit, hurt you. Diablo has no, no purple, right? He has no charge flip. Butcher is under the tower, so even though he has charge, it doesn't mean anything. And Varian doesn't get taunt yet, right? It's not level 4. He can't physically have taunt to taunt you. There is nothing here that scares you. Absolutely. But you're facing backwards. Like, look at this. You are facing the other way. Why? There is nothing to be afraid of in this situation. No burst damage, no CC, you're running. This is all. This is like three auto attacks for the running, a Q that you could have thrown out and you didn't get off until way later in the fight. Nothing scared you there, but you're running, right? And this translates to the whole game, the whole game. I don't think it's just now. And now they probably have all their stuff back because it's been a while, let's check. He's about to have charge flip. Gul'dan uh, just used purple, so that's a burst damage that's down right now. And again, Varian doesn't have anything and Butcher's dead. All right, so he has charge flip. But the moment you see him use charge flip, all right, he's charged, cool, step in, but you're going the other way. I mean, then you walk onto the silence, so that's a whole different can of worms. But see how see how you're like floating this whole time. Let's go back and watch again. You float around after all the things that can that can kill you have been used. They can't like they're, unless they're hacking, they can't physically get their spells again. So here, let's watch how much you float from from the point at which Diablo uses his spell. All right, he uses that 40 seconds. So it took you four five seconds before you could get anything off. You need to be like that. You just need to. Snap your fingers, there it is. Oh, he charged, boom, done, combo. Boom, done, combo. And these little seconds are gonna add up to harder combos to hit. They're gonna make it so that you don't kill people. And it also is gonna make it dangerous for your team. Cause the longer you go without getting that combo off, the longer your, the other team has to like beat the crap out of, of your character or of your ally character, right? So like, if you get that off faster then they are under pressure now, and they have to back off. And so, Junkenstein here might have taken less damage if you just done it faster. You just stepped faster. Now a little bit of time has passed, so we can assume once again that they have their CC and they have their burst damage. Okay, he just used purples, but he missed you. So that's great. Now let's take a look at what we see. Purples are down. Diablo is not even here. So literally all you need to see is Butcher Charge. If Butcher Charges, no one can touch you. You are literally invisible. 
What's your charges? Oh no! Let's take a look at that one again. Let's go from the mo moment butcher charges. Which is, all right, he charges at one minute 10, right? Diablo is not here. All their burst is down, butcher has charged. Nothing scares you in this situation. And you did absolutely nothing. This is what I mean when I say windows. And this will go on for every team fight, every small skirmish, every everything under the sun. When you go into a game, you want to look at your opponent's team and you want to say, what CC do they have, if any, because sometimes people literally don't draft CC and I'll never understand why. And you want to go, what burst damage do they have? And when you're in a skirmish, that's all you have to look for. Every other spell that gets used, who cares? Who, like, who cares? It doesn't mean anything to you. All you're looking for is burst damage and CC. You see it go down, you know you can just step up and crush people. Just step in, combo. I've charged my, I've, I've gotten my passive up. Step up, combo. I've got my passive up. Step up, combo. And then there you throw out like a little, like, E, right? But you would it would have been on cooldown because you would have already hit a massive combo down here. We already been over that. That was just a little wiggly. Do -do 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 So what do you think of that? Any uh, questions on that so far? See, that's perfect. Nothing scares you. You walk right in and hit the combo. So you can do it sometimes, but I don't think you're like actively recognizing the situation all the time. And if you just, if you recognize it all the time, you're gonna stack. You're gonna get more damage. You're gonna carry harder. And we've already been over that this was a little weird. Like, going up only makes sense if you get kills, but you're not going to get kills early as Skelter is odd, so it's better to come down here. And then you went up and soaked when you shouldn't have. So you need to track abilities more and capitalize on that. Yes, and the abilities, again, that you're looking for, and I'll say this over and over, CC and burst damage. When you're a backline character, those are what you need to look out for. Crowd control, stuns. Things that move you around, things that lock you down, roots, slows, things of this nature. You want to look for them, and when they aren't there, then no one can pin you to the ground. If you can't get pinned down as a squishy character, then they can't kill you. The only thing that can kill you without pinning you down is burst damage, right? Kel'Thuzad can explode someone. Now, he also has CC. But KT can explode someone. Jaina can explode someone. They don't have to lock you down. They just have so much damage. Like KT Fire and KT Ice and Jaina, right? All these characters. So, oh, here. So every situation, all you have to do is calculate, all right, the only burst damage is Ghoul Dance Purple. He doesn't even have stun because he wouldn't jump. So literally the only thing you're wishing out for is that you don't get charged by Butcher. As long as you don't get charged by Butcher, boom, you didn't, so you stepped in, right? But you miss that sometimes. Sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. If you get more consistent, you'll stack faster, you'll get more kills, you'll carry harder, your team will be ahead. On and on and on, the great things just fall and fall and fall into your lap as as you do that. Look at what's happening in the rest of the game. And we come down here. That just happens. The rest of your team is like stepping, whatever. It goes on your back. So I think we can do a little bit of a summation of everything that we've gone over here because there's not much left unless you have questions. And there's no point in spending any more of your time than you need to. So, let's see. You need to do. Let's see, what order should we go in? Let's go with count and then recognize. All right, cool. So the things that you're looking for in your games that you don't always see, and sometimes you get them right, right? Sometimes you get them right, that you don't always see. I want you to practice counting. Take a quick look at your mini-map and count if there's more of them or you. Or just track who's dead at the top of the screen. Also works in a lot of situations. If there's more of them, run. Unless you can get cheeky kills, because apparently in bronze you can walk into 1v3s on a consistent basis and kill people, which blows my mind. If there's more of you, kill them. 
Just go. Just pull the trigger. Just kill him. So, who, who's got more? You or them? Then, let's see. We talked about stepping up early, right? You miss a lot of early stacks. That mid-fight is just there for you to stack your quest. That's the whole point. That is all you fight in mid over. If you have a quest, you want to stack it. So don't lose that opportunity. Don't lose that opportunity. Maximize. Make the most efficient. The best way to make it the most efficient is windows. You're looking for what what scares you as a character, which is CC and burst damage. You're, and you just stare at the fight looking for those things. The moment they are down, walk in and combo. That's how KT is played. The moment he has that opportunity, walk in and combo. And after that, I want you to do a lot more of fundamental rotations. Soaking for 10 is fine. It's technically a smart move. But in bronze, nothing is going to stop your team from fighting. They will go in. And they will do it sloppily, and they will do it poorly, and so will the other team. And so the other team may have 10s, but I guarantee you that at low elos, that hardly means anything. It hardly means anything. Most people are not playing their characters correctly in the first place. So... Expecting them to do that is just folly. All you're going to do is you're going to remember that whole counting thing. You're going to give the other team an advantage. You're going to give the other team more people. And they're just going to kill your team and they're going to get more ahead. If you're there, though, maybe you get a combo. Maybe you slow someone and your team doesn't die. Maybe because the other team's so bad, even though they have 10, they die. I just do fundamentals. And fundamental rotation is. Soak all the lanes, and when the map mechanic comes up, the temples, the altars, the spiders, whatever it is, play around that until it is over. Until it is over, play around that. That is probably your biggest mistake in this entire game, is that you didn't go to a whole bunch of altar phases. A whole bunch of them. You're just late, or you just didn't go. And you got to get there. you got to get to those altar phases. Above that, I don't think there's really that much to go over. Honestly, you have a really strong grasp of KT. You get the combo down. You blow people up. You blow people up in situations where they, they shouldn't be blow upable, but they're dumb, and I'm glad you recognize those. I'm glad you have a, a strong understanding of your character's burst potential. That That's really good. The fact that you know what you can burst is, is great. And then the only other little thing that we talked about, the really small thing that we talked about, was recognizing which bush is the best bush to sit in when you're going to try and pop out and cheese somebody. And I think, in general, you can be a little more aggressively positioned than you are. You don't have to be crazy aggressive, but you can be a little more aggressive. Any questions, or do you want to wrap this up? Just one. What's up? Oh, it's just you. You seem fine. No, your movement seems fine. I think there are a couple times. The only times it looks wiggly, your, your actual movement is... Uh, when, when you don't step on windows. That, all the rest of the time you look just fine. So that, that gonna do it for you? You feel satisfied? Alrighty. I'm glad I could help you, man. I hope you take this and get to wherever you're hoping to get to in solo queue.